Hello, and welcome to the GBC Productions channel. This is episode 86. In this video, I will be taking apart a Fisher-Price Pocket Rockers tape player from the 80s. If this doesn't scream 80s, I don't know what does. I have several tapes here. This one has an updated case. And then a storage box here that holds four tapes. Two tapes in each piece that slides out. I'm going to take one of these tapes out of here. And originally, a case for the tape would look like this clip here. See if I can get it in here. And that's what it would originally come with. It protects the tape and it has a little belt clip. These tapes look very similar to the tapes I showed in a previous video with the Wurlitzer jukebox. This is one of the Wurlitzer tapes. The casing of the two tapes is slightly different, but the tape itself is the same width. It also looks like the tape goes in the opposite direction based on the way that these cartridges are set up. If I hold them together like this, the pinch roller on the Wurlitzer tape is here, and on the Pocket Rockers, it's on the other side. And the width appears to be the same as what's on a standard cassette. Now let's take a little better look at the tape player. Now this player does work, but there's a lot of static on the switch and the volume control. Now if we take a look in here, you can't really see it too well, I'll show a little later. It looks like a standard stereo tape head and the switch will switch between one track and then the other. I'm going to reorganize for a moment and I'll be right back. I've removed the strap and the batteries are out. One more thing I want to point out on the tape real quick. On the back of the tape here there is the song listing and the switch allows you to switch between the two songs. Interestingly enough, it's not in the same order on every tape. Anyway, time to take this thing apart. This is going to get a little interesting because there's two screws here at this end, but there's also two screws literally underneath the battery door, like right under the hinge part. I'm going to have to pause for a moment to try to find a tool that can get them. I had to get a different screwdriver and literally jam it in there. And we're in. And those screws can just stay in there. Here's the tape door. Let me see if I can remove that. Pulls right out. This is the eject lever that pushes the tape out. Let's see if I can show this. Of course, it would help if I put the tape in the right way. And here's a better look at the pinch roller. And there's the tape head. And if I push that lever up, it'll eject the tape. Now, I'm going to take the lever out. Let's see if we can get a closer look at the head. It looks like a standard single direction stereo head. So it looks like it's only using half the width of the tape for both songs. I'm thinking half the width of this tape is actually blank. I'm not going to try to record on the blank half. Anyway, while I'm in here, I need to clean the program switch. And I need to clean the volume control. I think I should take the entire mechanism out.
Now let's see if this will lift out. Just a moment, I think I'm missing something. Okay, I do have to take the volume knob off. There is a sticker there that I'm going to have to take off first. I'll try to get the sticker off without destroying it. I got the sticker off, and it has the tiniest little screw underneath it. And now the whole mechanism should lift out of here. And it lifts out. The speaker wires connect here, and there's no connector. They're soldered in. We can still look around. Here's the belt. There's the volume control knob and the earphone jack. This screw holds the tape mechanism in place. And this is the adjustment for the tape head. Now I'm going to get some deoxid and clean up this volume control and the program switch. Then I'll exercise the switch a little bit and the volume control and try to get it sounding clean. Okay, I've sprayed some deoxid in there and I've exercised the switch a bunch of times. Next, I'm going to clean up the volume control then I'll put this back in the casing and put some batteries in it and test it out. All right, I have the mechanism back in. I've exercised the switch. It doesn't have static in anymore. I have noticed that one program seems louder than the other. And that seems to be true on all of the tapes. There also is a lot of wow and flutter on this. But that's not surprising, because this belt is probably worn out. Anyway, it's working. I don't expect it to be high quality. It never was meant to be. Eventually, I will put a new belt on it. And that's what's inside a Pocket Rockers by Fisher Price. Don't forget to subscribe for more, mash that like button, and comment below. Until next time, this is Uncle D from GBC Productions, signing off.